Hi guys, it's that time again, which is better? And it'll be between Where Fear and Weapons Meet by 1914 and God Ends Here by Eon. So looking at Where Fear and Weapons Meet by 1914, just on record, I'm not the biggest history buff out here. I'm not that knowledgeable when it comes to war, but listening to their songs, you can definitely get goosebumps. Now there is no doubt that these guys are master songwriters. Each song dives into a topic that you don't really know much about, but you come out of the song with your eyes wide opened. What sets these guys apart from most bands is that they have songs that tell a story and a story has a main character. So sometimes ha- sometimes has a name that helps the listener to relate to. They'll have a goal to just survive a battle or sometimes not have the mental capacity to get through certain struggles. The fact that 1914 can write about mental anguish these soldiers went through makes it seem like you're reading a journal from actual people. It's beautiful, haunting, and it can even be addicted to listen to. <clears throat> the music side of things also has 1914 standing out amongst others. Sure, a band can be a mix of genres, but it really shines here. There is black, doom, death, and even a beautiful non-metal song that is structurally perfected on this record. The song ACM is a straight up death doom track that is followed by Mugotha Koenig Vatanen, I hope I said it right, which is primarily dark. Uh, and the song I'm There is nothing overly outstanding about the instruments themselves. There aren't any crazy guitar solos or drum sections that will burn your brain. However, each song is written as complex or as simple as it needs to be. Bagpipes and an orchestra also put this in its top tier status. Now, the songs can be a bit long. I'm not phased by this, but there are a few tracks that could have been a minute or two shorter. Also, the songs War In and War Out have instrumentals which usually provide a haunting beginning and end to a 1914 album. Not many bands can accomplish what these guys have done on most of their albums. They write with emotion and it's perfectly expressed by the A plus vocals of Dimitro Kumar. I hope this band keeps doing what they're doing because they just seem unstoppable. As such it gives, we're going to look at God Ends Here by Eon. Now this is a band that has always been curious to me. They have considerable pedigree when taking into account how long they've been around and who's in the band. And they've garnered generally positive metal media and they've always had support from others within the scene who have supported the band's merch and the band on on the road and to help them even gain further attention but there's always been something unknown something unknown something holding this band back from exploding onto the scene and and i think this could be the album that changes things for the better right from that explosive blast rift of lies then you honestly Honestly, you know exactly what you're getting into here, and it's reassuring. If you're a fan of bands like Blood Red Throne, Miss Cog, which are just straight up death metal bands, or even EOS previous albums, then you will definitely like listening to this. <laughs> it's brutal riffage with just the right amount of bomb blast about and there's tons of carpet roll double bass driving the rhythms at the same time the band is not shy about occasionally throwing in a big rock chord or two things to mix it up occasional blast beats are used are used to break things up on the speed front but they are used a bit more sparingly compared to what seems to be the, the, rig, the rigor in extreme metal nowadays <laughs> and why that might turn some people off People who are familiar and love old school death metal will find plenty to love here. The list of standout cuts absolutely has to include the River in Tower track where an orchestral backdrop is used, to, used in great effect in, in much the same way where they uses atmosphere on occasional tracks. A watch you pay stop start pay riff and that closing chart make this an absolute banger that will surely be a focal point for the band's live sets going forward. One has to find a lot to love in a song like The Night of Eternity, where there's a lot of stylistic similarities to Cannibal Corpse. 
And when I say cannibal corpse, I'm talking about the George Corpse Grinder Fisher era of cannibal corpse, with that snare on snare thrash rift and even the vocal delivery over said riff. It comes off as playfully appreciated rather than the derivative and lights up your ears when you first hear it. Later, later in the album, some some really angular riffing, similar to Trey Azatov's or, or Morbid Angel, <laughs> drives the brutal and irreverent, despise the cross, and Apple Closer, Queen of Lies, and it just ups the bomb bus to probably the highest level if I could, could take it. Now, vocalist Tommy Dalstrom is full of force here, especially, but he's definitely a focus on the album's mix job, and rightfully so because he's one of those incredible death metal vocalists whose delivery has only improved with age. Speaking of the mix, you've got to give up for ex guitarist Ronnie Bjornstrom to really have in his pulse of what this band truly needs from an engineer standpoint. Everything just sounds kind of perfect with just the rap rhyme right of grime and rhyme right of crispiness and leveling across the board. You would honestly have needed for an album like this to finally get them to that next level. Let's hope they get got enough attention for it. So there you have it guys, let me know in the comments down below what you thought was the better album. Other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.